Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to show you my new toy. It's not an official review, but I do want to show you what I have because I'm going to be using it in future videos very soon. It is a digital microscope, sort of a plain brown box, but the company is called Andenstar. And it actually provides a little seven inch screen. It has three different lenses to it, different magnification levels. It also has the ability to output to HDMI or to USB as well, and to actually take video and or pictures onto an SD card, one of the uh, micro SD cards that is. And it's supposed to come with all of that and all the cables that are needed for it as well. So what I'll do is this will be sort of a quick introduction to it, followed by my having it set up and showing you exactly how it works on some test images. I'll just hook it right up to my monitor that I can capture and put on the video here and you'll be able to see what I see. Okay, so let me first show you what's in the box. I'll take it all out, lay it on the table, and then we'll talk about it. Stick around to the end, and you'll actually see the full value of what this provides. But in addition to that, I'll be talking about a couple of future projects that I'm doing. Okay? Okay, here's everything laid out. Let me describe some of it. It's got uh, two sets of instructions. It's got a quick start guide, a fan folded paper, I guess for quick assembly. And then it's got a full detailed manual. So I'll be spending some time in that. Then here is the main screen and microscope. The microscope is built into the back of the screen here. It's all one piece. The microprocessor is probably inside there as well since you have all the control buttons here. You could do the same functions with this remote control that are here on the front panel. Mostly about, you know, zooming in, zooming out, increasing or decreasing the light and a few other options here. This is the base the main base with two little lights on it that have flexible arms to them and you can position them in the way you need to look at your work. These are clips that I'll have to install on the base here. So they came in a separate package. You have the main standing bar that'll go into the back of the, uh, the base like this. Okay. And then you have the part that will actually hold through this ring here and then connect this way everything and can go up and down accordingly so I got to assemble it it doesn't look like it's that difficult to assemble it comes with uh, the power controller which has an on and off button and you can change the intensity of the lights it has a separate connector for the lights there's one over here on the side over here on this thing and then there's another one on this light box so you can disconnect the light power from there and plug it into this light box. Now what's that's for? That's for some samples that they give you to do some uh, looking, maybe show the kids some of the things that you want to do. They're all labeled. So for example, this one says a, a pine stem, ep epidemia of onion, honeybee wing, honeybee worker leg, and a musica domestica compound eye loading. Not sure what that is. Put that all and save it. I'm not sure how much I'm going to play with that, but maybe my granddaughter would like to see some of those things amplified. It also has a little bug box. So if you capture your own bugs and you can put, capture them in here, you can actually amplify them and see them even walking around down on the bottom of the bug box for as long as they survive. It's got a total of three lenses. It's got an A lens, a a D lens and an L lens, and they all have different amplification factors. So this A1 is a 12 millimeter to 320 in terms of its distance from the object. And I believe that's the more general purpose one. And the other ones are used for additional magnification. I think it can get up to over 2000 times the image that it sees. This happens to be a seven inch screen. It also comes in a 10 inch screen but I didn't see it as cost effective. The amount of extra money they wanted for that was probably a little more than I thought it was worth. Because you have the HDMI, they give you a cable for that to connect it up to your computer. There's a mini HDMI at one end and a regular HDMI at the other. They give you a pair of tweezers. They give you a little bag of spare parts. It says it right there, spare parts. They give you a USB cable. So you can, with software on your PC, you can load this in and see it without HDMI, just uh, you know, into an application that I believe you have to download from their website. 
And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So I wanted to show all of the pieces and what I'll do next is put it all together and then we'll try seeing how it looks. First on the little screen and then after that up on the larger 27 inch computer screen that I have here. The resolution is pretty high. It actually, I guess it's the equivalent of like a, a, a 3K screen because it's cropped in at the sides. But in terms of vertical resolution, it is the same as what a 4K would have. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a couple of things that you're going to need that they did not include, like a couple of AAA batteries for your remote, and also an HDMI power adapter that can support at least two amps. I believe this one here that I have is a three amp version of it. So we should be good. They're pretty cheap these days. Okay, let's get this thing assembled. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the two spring-loaded clamps on the bottom. It looks like the easiest thing to do when everything else is out of the way. So according to the instructions, you gotta put a spring followed by a screw into this little hole here. And then you sort of screw these right into the pre-drilled holes that are in the bottom. Don't go all the way. It's enough that you can tape this now and just sort of push it and clamp what you want underneath it a little bit more. That's it. Let me do the other one. And they can be moved around to any way you want here. I would suggest you push down before you move it. Otherwise it'll scratch the surface. Now let's get this vertical bar in. Now the vertical bar has a stopper on it. This is the limiting thing once you put it on place to limit how far down the lens is supposed to go. For now, we'll just put it in just like this. It just sort of screws into the, the little metal piece here at the bottom. And we'll make it nice and snug. And we'll lower this down a little bit. We'll tighten it up in the back here so that it's locked in place. Now we need the boom goes in in this direction, so it's offset, and then it'll be lined with this, and it just sort of comes down to a nice position. I'll lock it in any place for now, and I'll push this back out of the way a little bit, and now it's time for the actual screen and scope. Okay, now it already has the lens A attached, so we have to take it off by loosening these two screws, Actually, I may have to remove them, let me say here. Yeah. Take these screws out of here on both sides. That is an actual lens, so we don't want to drop it or anything like that or get anything into it. And the lens pops out. I'll put it off to the side. And then this whole thing, oh, and by the way, if you look here, you actually see the screen in here, the LCD. So you put this through here. Make sure these two screws are loosened. Put this into here until it drops down into that position. And then we'll tighten those two screws. And then we got to put the lens back. And the lens has two screw holes in it. So we got to make sure that we account for that. Make sure you can read it from the front. So we're going to put the, the fact that it says A here. We're going to make sure that we can see that when we put the lens back in. That's true for any of the lenses. Push it up in there. And then we get this until we can screw the retaining screws in place. First one, then the other. Snug. And then we're all set. Here's how it looks from the side. This position here allows you to go up and down. So you just turn it and the whole thing rises. So that's a, a fine adjustment. This is the course adjustment. So you set this down here for the lowest thing you'd like to do and then you just have to loosen this screw and you can go all the way down. And that stops it right there. And we would tighten this one up too to make sure it's nice and solid. And then so that's a coarse adjustment. And then this is the fine adjustment to go up and down within that. Okay, I can take this off now, I think. Do a tear. Not much of a tear, but it's off. Okay, let's get the wiring done on it. So it has this harness, which is to provide power and light, power and dimming. We'll take this thing out and hook it up to where it's supposed to go. This end here connects up to the USB charger. I got one here that uh, is three amps, so we're good. One of these goes up to the monitor. There's a connector here on the back of the monitor. 
where this connects, connects to. This one here connects to the lights. So the lights has a little connector back, back over here that it plugs into. And that's where that plugs into for the lights. Now, if you decide to use the slide unit, as you would see here, it has its own light inside. You would disconnect it from the base and you would plug the power into this little connector right here. And that would then provide the power to the slide viewer. Let me go back to the way it was though. So get that in. Now let's plug it in and see what we get. Oh, it came right on. So the two lights, the two LED lights came right on. I think the LED lights are only controlled by the remote. So you have the remote here and you have the brightness plus and minus. So I can bring it down to dim it. You click it, you can bring it bright, bright again. That's the plus, that's the minus. And then to turn it on, there should be a power switch right here. There we go. Now it's come up, it says welcome on there. And now we just see black. If I put my hands underneath here, we see something. Let me throw something underneath there and see if it sees it. Let me throw this Swiss Army knife underneath here. I'll bring it up a little bit because it shouldn't be this low for this one. This tells you what the millimeters are. So right here, can see now it sees the, the knife itself. I could take the, one of the blades out. I'll take the corkscrew out. How's that? We'll put the corkscrew into the, uh, into the view. Turn it around. Adjust the lights in the bottom so you get what you want. And you see the tip of this corkscrew. And you focus it with this adjustment right in here. It's got a little thumb thing to it. And you can adjust it to the focus, whatever you want. And there it is. Make it as sharp as you want. And then the screen itself has on it the zoom and the... So we can go up. We can make it come back some more. Or we can go down. Or I can adjust this thing here to bring it back up again. And there's the tip of the corkscrew. That's under the, the light. Now I've hooked it up to my monitor in the background here. It did say in the manual it wouldn't show both, but it seems to be doing fine. I don't have the SD card in there, so I can't take pictures or, uh, or take a video, but I will do that as part of this test. So the next thing I'll show you is some more detail of things on the HDMI screen. Just in case you're interested, I decided to take a snippet of the remote control printout from the manual, and I highlighted it a little bit. It was a bit hard to read in the small manual that comes with the device. But you can see here, I've highlighted all the key switches. Some of them I wonder about, because I don't know if I've ever used them or not. Okay, let me start out with a dime that I got out of my uh, change drawer. That's pretty crisp. I can see all the lines and imperfections in it. Look on the ridge there in the upper right-hand corner. So it looks like it uh, captured pretty good. I'm using the A lens with this one, which is the pretty standard lens that's uh, used for general purpose. Okay, so let me switch over to something else. Okay, now I'm looking at a circuit board. It's actually an FPGA, a small one that I have that I really haven't played with much. I've had it for a couple of years now. I'm looking at with the L lens, which is meant for that. Let me see if I can get this in focus here. I got it all the way up at the top. Wow, look at that. I can see every detail of that. And if I move it around, there's the Altera FPGA chip. And then a assortment of other chips that uh, that it had. I can get the lighting a little bit better. You can see how you can then identify some of the chips involved, right? The lighting is critical to these types of things, right? So I can move that around. Well, look at that. Looks like a crystal oscillator over here. That looks pretty good, so hopefully it'll help me in future projects that I want to do that are involving soldering, or surface mount equipment, whatever. Let me try the next one. Okay, here's one of the samples that came with the uh, slide viewer. Let me see if I can get this guy in focus here. Oh, it's if I just touch it, it gets out of whack. Wow, look at that. I have to barely touch it. It's not very big on the slide at all. And I want to zoom in. And I guess what I can do is I can actually try to zoom in even further if I wanted to. This is done with the, um, I believe it's the D lens. 
Yes, it's a D lens. So let me see if I can get this in focus. I look at that, you can actually see the cells. Let me try to bump this up. I'll use the remote. Clicking it up. Let me try to focus it at the same time. I'm used, this is the, uh, the zoom in on the remote. Wow, look at that. You can actually see the cells. I can zoom in even further. That's about the maximum that I can get. Oh my gosh. My granddaughter's gonna love this one. Looking at scientific work on it. You can barely, can't, can't touch the table on this because it just bounces all over the place. But it does a great job amplifi amplifying this uh, microorganism, in this case, a pine tree stem. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good set of samples here. Well, this worked out pretty good, I think. I like it. I've never had a digital microscope or really any microscope since I was like a kid. And we, you get the cheap ones from the toy store for about 10 bucks. But this one, being able to actually look at things and what I really want to use it for is projects some electronic projects and some other miscellaneous projects that I have. And I think this will serve me well. We'll see. So stay tuned for follow-up videos to this where I'll be using this uh, digital microscope to uh, fix, uh, hopefully fix a motherboard, hopefully fix a Raspberry Pi. We'll see as we go along. I don't, they won't happen right away, but they will happen. I guarantee it.